yearling bucks can really screw up the whole timing of the rut because understand that buck's equivalent to a 12 year old boy he's got his first surge of tes testosterone he's now discovered females and you can't shut him down that's the one age class you cannot turn nocturnal they're going to move regardless of the pressure because when things start to build in the fall you're going to see yearling bucks try to chase those from the 15th of october right on through december it's kind of chaotic the big guys kind of move when they know they need to move and so it's it's an exciting thing to study it's an exciting thing to see, and, uh, and I know that uh, our readership, our viewership with the TV show, you know, they get energized by this. They want to kind of know a little bit about what's going to happen. It may not happen exactly like we said it, but for a lot of hunters it does. And so there's kind of two sides of the equation, but that, that's what makes it exciting. Does the maturity level matter with your composition of your herd? I mean, if you have more mature bucks, say you have more three, four, and five-year-old bucks, does that kind of spur any of the rut earlier or not? Uh, I think anytime you've got mature deer in your population, and mature deer is going to be relevant. There are going to be some parts of the country that a mature whitetail buck's two and a half years old. There's going to be other parts of the country where quality deer management is really coming into play, where you're going to say three, four, five year old bucks are going to be uh, really part of the mix. When you get older class bucks, boy, that can make for an intense rut providing one thing happens, and that is you don't have too many does. If you've got too many does, you're not going to see an intense rut because no buck's going to get his brains beat out when he's got two or three girls right there, right now. Mm -hmm. And another thing to remember is that when you've got those mature bucks, they're going to be covering a lot of ground come peak rut, and they're going to be walking, especially in farm country. And you may have some of these bucks going covering 4,000 acres. And so if you can get your buck-to-doe ratio reasonably balanced, you're going to have a lot of competition. Rattling's going to work great. Hunting scrape lines is going to work great. Hunting rub lines is going to work great. And uh, the older population of bucks you can have with a balanced deer herd, that's going to make for a spectacular rut. Now, as far as whether it's going to happen earlier or later, uh, that whitetail buck's ready to go November 1st. Matter of fact, he's ready to go October 1st. But you have to have some things come into play for him to want to get going. And of course, that's that doe cycling. And uh, that's gonna be a key. And so there are a lot of things that come into play here, but uh, there's a lot of things we also know about uh, this research that makes it pretty, pretty interesting to study. Yearling bucks can really screw up the whole timing of the rut because understand that buck's equivalent to a 12 year old boy. He's got his first surge of tes testosterone. He's now discovered females and you can't shut him down. That's the one age class you cannot turn nocturnal. They're gonna move regardless of the pressure because when things start to build in the fall, you're gonna see yearling bucks try to chase does from the 15th of October right on through December. It's kind of chaotic. The big guys kind of move when they know they need to move. And so it's, it's an exciting thing to study. It's an exciting thing to see. And, uh, and I know that uh, our readership, our viewership with the TV show, you know, they get energized by this. They want to kind of know a little bit about what's going to happen. It may not happen exactly like we said it, but for a lot of hunters it does. And so there's kind of two sides of the equation, but that, that's what makes it exciting. Does the 